Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This episode is going to be about symbol creation workflow in KiCad. Or said another way, actually creating your first footprint. So we'll start like we always do, opening up the KiCad launcher, and then going into the e schema. Again, blank project, we're going to create a new part going to library editor. And we have a blank screen like usual. So first off, we need to pick where we actually want this symbol to go. So first we're going to pick the actual uh, folder, or in this case library, and what uh, this is where it's going to live once we actually you know, start inserting it into schematics, we'll pull from this. And so we'll use the generic device library, which is where all the, all the smaller and more generic components like resistors, capacitors, inductors live. All right, so whereas before we would we were loading components from the library, now we're actually just going to start from scratch. This brings up a new a new uh, dialog here. So we're going to call this. Uh, we're going to name the component reference designator. This this is often relates to which component you're using. If you're using a resistor, usually it's R one. You know, so this would this would represent the R for for chips and for integrated circuits uh, usually U is used uh, and there's a there's a wide range of different uh, conventions that we'll post in the show notes here but in this case we'll keep it as U because this will you know be a generic type of of integrated circuit number of parts per package this is how many uh, how many parts you actually show on the schematic obviously the final footprint will all be the same thing we can have alternate body styles. So this is again the De Morgan reference uh, refers to logic symbols, creating as a, as a power symbol, and that's uh, we'll get to that in a little bit here. And then locking the package refers to once you've actually placed it in a schematic. If you want to change the pins, uh, you can't do that if this is selected. Global pin settings. The uh, this is just the size of the offset of the text rather. And then this is actually where the text shows up in relation to the actual pin. So all these things are set at the beginning, but they can be changed later. So we'll just leave it. Everything else is default. This will be the test package. You can see that it drops two things down here. You actually can't see it to start with, but as we zoom in, and you can once again you can see the zoom level down here. You can see test is the package name, and then you can kind of see underneath there. So what we do is we um, mouse over top of test, which is the the actual name of the package, hit M, and that'll allow us to select the field value here, and then we can move this up and see what the other one is. And the other one is the reference designator, which is not named, and it won't be in the schematic uh, symbol library editor because that is actually once you place it into your your schematic, you know you can have multiple versions of this part, so that gets named later. Okay, so these are the two things. Our coordinate system starts right here, 0, 0. Another thing we should note is if we right click and then we hit grid select, we can see that it's currently on the largest grid setting, which is 50 mils. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you try and place your pins on the highest grid setting possible. And that was all uh, explained in the importance of grids video. But I, go, I suggest you go check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. OK, uh, so we have the two pieces of information here. So let's look at the settings for the part. So these are the properties. So you can add in descriptions and keywords, and these are really helping you uh, find the parts if you're searching. Same with alias and footprint filters. And then here's many of those options we actually saw early on when we were actually creating the parts, locking it, power symbols, number of units. And this is nice if you kind of run out of space on one component, you might want to add another, another unit here. So that's just how you find that. As we looked at when we were doing an introduction to the library editor, we can see that the properties field, you can actually add, you can add a field here, and if you select that, you can change this to color, as we talked about before. We'll make that uh, color, oops, geez, color, and then maybe we'll say purple. And if we add this field, okay, let's say okay, you can see that it actually shows up here. And we can add this as an actual component, or as an actual property of the schematic symbol that we're creating right now. So we're all good to go. We have all of the properties that we want. We have all the visibility. Again, we can show this. We can hide it, rotate it. Everything is selectable here. You can change your justification. 
Now we actually need to draw the outline of the schematic symbol itself, and that's done with these tools over here. And so we're going to just add a very, very simple rectangle. Good to go. And you should note also that the center of the part is, uh, you know, we, we've set that in the center here. We could change the anchor if you wanted to be the anchor to be up in the upper left corner. And what that really does is that when you move this symbol around in the schematic editor, once you mouse over it and hit the M key, it'll actually grab this corner. And so that's kind of arbitrary for right now. Um, it could matter if you have a very funny looking part or if you want to know a very exact place to grab the part. But for right now, we'll just leave that up there. So we see that we have the entire package set up. Okay, so now we go into the pins dialog, which is also covered in the pin, pins on KiCad schematic symbols video, which is also in the module tool of the KiCad course outline. So we'll actually click here, create a pin. So we'll call this, uh, how about ground? Ground pin, pin number one. Orientation, we'll change this to top. Oops, oh, sorry, up. And then electrical input type, we'll change this to power input. Oops. And change this, keep the same graphic style. And then it allows us to place the component and the pin right down here. All right, so now we can, if we'd like, we can. Uh, create another symbol, maybe a power. So we say power, pin number two. We'll say it changes to down, which uh, we'll select that. Which also refers, as we talked about in the other video, refers to the labeling instead of anything else. And we'll keep that as power input. All right, so now we have power and ground on our chip and we'll just leave it like that for right now. We could also add other arbitrary shapes here. So maybe we want a triangle. If we right click, we can hit line end. And, or we can add circles and everything else. Now, this is really the only time that I would recommend to change the grid is when you're doing drawings because sometimes you wanna add detail that you can't really get in there, so you know, if you're if you're just doing editing of the actual drawings, you know, you can change the grid. You can't even see the grid; it's so small right now. We actually have super fine control of this, so we can actually draw whatever we'd like now, which is only really limited by the width of the uh, of the line that you're actually using, and that's also editable as well. So we can actually change the weight. So that's how you create uh, a very, very simple symbol. And you know, from here, you can create much larger symbols. You can add in uh, you know, upwards of hundreds, if not thousands, of pins on very, very complicated parts. And once it's done, then we save the library. This will ask if you want to include the last component change. If we would have hit the uh, button up here, that would have actually saved it to the library first. But then we can save the entire library. This will ask if you want to change the actual library itself. And all right, let's just double check to see that it's there. So we're still in the library test. We're going to load from current library, list all, should see test right there. All right, and that loads it back up. All right, so that is our first uh, schematic symbol. It's not very pretty, obviously, but that is kind of where you start. So next we'll, we'll go up into getting into crazier components and actually starting to put those into your schematics.